So I'm inside of Adobe After Effects here and I've got a GeoLayers project set up and I've added some cool clouds and a pre-comp here that I've pinned to my map and I've created a little zoom animation that you can see here. And I have a problem and that's the fact that these clouds are blocking my map when I get all the way zoomed in here. So I could come in here and just do a quick little opacity animation, keyframe the opacity out or do a position keyframe and take care of these clouds. However, when you're working in GeoLayers and you have a lot of elements on your map, that's a lot of keyframing. If you're fading things in and out, and if you're doing it more than once, this can take up a lot of time, not to mention the fact that if you ever wanna change your camera movements or the timing and pacing of everything, you're gonna to have to move all those keyframes. It can be insanely tedious. I've definitely encountered this problem. And that was really the inspiration for this tutorial. I wanted to figure out how can I attach the opacity of a layer to the zoom level of the map comp and have that zoom level automate my fade in and fade out animations. So let me show you how it's done. Quick disclaimer, this is a more advanced tutorial because I'm gonna be doing some coding. However, if you follow this step-by-step, -step, you can create an animation preset that you can then just drag and drop on all of your layers or however you wanna use it. And then you'll be able to input some numbers and some sliders, it's pretty easy. And if you're a member of my Patreon page, I will make those presets available to you. So go get them. Now I went ahead and added a zoom reference text layer. That's what this is up here. This corresponds to the zoom level of my world map comp parameters. So if you grab your world map comp and hit the E key, it's gonna bring up your effects. And we're gonna be focusing on the zoom right here. So grab your zoom and then hit S twice to solo it. And this is the slider that's gonna be driving all of our animations. It's kind of kind of be controlling everything. So we can manually like scrub here and look at this. And these are the main numbers we wanna we wanna worry about. And we're gonna be controlling or driving an animation of these clouds. We're gonna be fading them out based on a specific zoom level. So if I just scrub through here, we gotta figure out where we want to fade them out. So if I scrub here, you can use this reference up here. So let's say we want them to start fading at around five points, let's say 5.5 .5 right here. And then we want them to be totally faded out around 5.9. So remember those numbers. Now we're gonna go to the clouds and hit T to bring up opacity. And now I'm gonna alt click to create a new place for an expression here. And I'm gonna full screen this so you guys can see what's going on. Now we're gonna type in some code manually here. Again, don't worry if you don't understand what's going on, I'm gonna explain it. But if you just follow this, you'll be able to create your own animation preset. So first I'm gonna add some variables. So I'm going to do zoom level here. So this is a variable and I'm going to attach this here to this slider of our zoom. This is gonna be driving the whole animation. Do semicolon, start a new line, and then we're gonna do zoom threshold. So this is basically the level where if we pass this threshold, our animation is gonna be triggered. So we're gonna just type in a number here manually, which is gonna be five point, what was it, 5.5. .5. This is the threshold where we want our animation to be to start essentially. So that is our threshold. And then we wanna do a fade speed. How long do we want our animation to go? And this will be in the units of the zoom. So we can just simply take our end and subtract the beginning animation. So it's gonna go from 5.5 .5 to 5.9. So that's just really 0.4. Now I'm manually entering these numbers right now, but you can connect these to sliders when you create your animation preset. I'll show you how to do that at the end. Okay, so I've got my variables written up here. Now to the real heart of this expression, which is an if else conditional statement. This is gonna tell After Effects if this parameter is met, do this, otherwise do this. So the way we write that out in code is we do if parentheses, and we're gonna say zoom level. So if the zoom level is greater than the zoom threshold, and then we do curly, braces or brackets, whatever. So now what do we want it to do? If the zoom level goes above that threshold, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to do a linear method. So this will trigger our animation. So linear maps one range of numbers to another range. So we're gonna be mapping the zoom level range to our opacity range. And we wanna basically say the zoom level is the start of our animation. And then the zoom level plus the fade speed is the end of our animation. Because you can see right here, fade speed is 0.4, which gives us uh, 5.9. So the way we write this out is first we put in our input, uh, which is zoom level, and then we put in the minimum and maximum. So now we do the minimum or the start of our animation, which is the zoom threshold. And then the maximum 
is zoom threshold plus fade speed. And now we do another comma, and now we're gonna do the range of opacity that this matches up with. So since we're doing a fade out, we're going from 100 opacity down to zero opacity. So we do 100 and then comma zero. So if you look here, there's four different inputs here. So the first is our zoom level inputs, so um, minimum and maximum, and this is mapped to the minimum and maximum here. Or I don't know if minimum and maximum is correct. It should be start and end. So opacity 100 is going to be mapped to the zoom threshold, and zero is mapped to the zoom threshold plus the fade speed. Okay, so pretty sure that looks good. Now we come down here and we want to tell it what happens if this isn't met. So if the zoom level is not greater than the threshold, what do we want this parameter to be at? And we want it to be at 100. So obviously that it starts, okay, we messed up something here. We didn't close it off with, uh, oh, we messed a couple things up. We don't, we have the semicolon and then the curly bracket. And I think we also missed a semicolon here. Let's see here. I think this is correct. Let's just pop back and see. You might need to watch that section over a couple of times to get your head if you don't, if you're not using coding. By the way, if you have code that is better than this, um, drop it in the comments. I'm trying to get better here. So let's play this back. We can see the cloud disappeared at that level. So let's just play it back and see what happens. There you go. So we have a fade out animation. There it is. So we have this expression now and it fades out. So now you can see we have this over here. So we have this um, map feature here, the UK. So first, let's just go ahead and um, actually change the blend mode here. Let's make this like an overlay. And let's say that we want to um, fade this one in. So we want to fade this one in with the same expression. We don't want it to keyframe it. So I'm going to go back to the opacity of this layer. I'm going to copy this. And so now we want to do a fade in instead of a fade out. So if I add an expression here, I can paste this in. And now let me full screen it again. So, all right, so how would we do this? We want to go uh, a fade in instead of a fade out. So first we need to go to our linear and we need to switch this from zero to 100 because we're going from zero up to 100. And if this parameter is not met, we want it to be at a level of zero. So our opacity is going to be at zero until we have that linear, um, the zoom threshold trigger it. So that should work. Let's take a look here. If I just scrub back, um, our cloud might be blocking this. So let's actually turn off the visibility of this cloud. And then sure enough, I think this worked. There it is. Amazing. So now we have this expression to fade in and we have an expression to fade out. However, it's not very easy to control. I don't want to dive into the expression every time and tweak these parameters. So what can we do about that? Well, what we can do, I'm glad you asked. I'll show you what we can do about that. So I'm going to go here to, let's see here. Let's maybe do it on this one because there's less effects here. So I need to add two effects. I'm going to add two slider controls. So with your layer selected, go effects and presets, and then go down to expression controls and grab slider control and drop that here. And then just go ahead and duplicate it because you want two. And we're going to call the first one zoom threshold. And we'll call the second one fade speed. And if you remember, our zoom threshold was 5.5 and our fade speed was 0.4. So I'm going to go ahead and put that, those inputs in so when I connect these, it will stay the same. So with these selected, I'm going to go back to my opacity here and I need to connect this up. So the way that I do this is I go to the variables here and I just grab this number and we're basically swapping out the number for the slider control. So with this highlighted, I grab this little property pick whip, not this one, we want this one. And we're gonna connect this to the zoom threshold here. So now I just swapped out that number for the slider so that now when I grab this layer, I can tweak the slider and it's gonna tweak the expression. Beautiful. So that's um, adjusted and now I'm gonna grab fade speed and do the same thing, connect it to this one. Okay, now with everything connected, it's very easy to make quick adjustments. For example, let's say we want our UK map feature to now fade in a little bit later in the zoom. So we just change the zoom 
threshold to 5.7 and we can even up the fade speed bring it up to 0.2 so now it'll fade in faster and just a tad later in the zoom so you can see now the changes are reflected right here so really easy to make quick adjustments and still no keyframes beautiful so now you can also you know you can connect other aspects of this expression to slider controls let's say we want our clouds to not completely fade out well if we jump back into the expression you'll see that if we change the number here in our linear let's say our range here goes from 100 to 50 instead of 100 to 0 so now this cloud goes down to 50 so we still have a cloud there and it's passing by but we can see the map underneath super duper cool still no keyframes and again i could connect aspects of this or parts of this linear expression to sliders and just go crazy with my parameters but you need to look at what you're doing in your particular project and what parameters are most important to you but with uh the whole reason and the inspiration behind this was trying to connect textures to the map and as you've seen in previous tutorials working with geo layers and, and adding texture is very difficult. You have to use like the seamless texture tile set, which gives you a specific look that refreshes a lot and you have to create a seamless texture in Photoshop. With this, you could add um, two to three textures depending on the, the size of your zoom or the how far in your zoom goes and then set those textures at different you know places and then just add this expression to have them fading as you zoom in and you can control the subtleness of the fade and have tight control over everything. Now, to create an animation preset, I can go grab this and hit keyboard shortcut E to grab the effects and then hold shift and hit T. And then you just grab the effects that you wanna be put in your animation preset and grab this opacity parameter with the expression. And then in the effects and presets panel, do save animation preset and I'm gonna call it Boon Fade In During Zoom, because this is our fade in. And then I can obviously create one for fade out as well. Now, to see if this works, I'm gonna turn off these, I'm gonna go draw out a new shape entirely and see if our magic worked. So here is Belgium. You can see here, right now, we're just zooming in. Belgium stays boring and up at all times so let's quickly change the blend to this overlay and now with it selected i'll go back to effects and presets and go grab this animation preset boon fade in during zoom and now we play it back and voila it's not there and it zooms uh, it fades in at 5.7 oh 5.7 and 2 so we can change that as needed so really really cool if you think about this um, with the clouds, the clouds is a very cool example actually because you could create clouds, you could design clouds at one like zoom level, super wide, and then you could even have clouds um, at a super tight zoom level and then automate those with the expressions to only show up at those. So no matter how much you're animating, they will zoom in. Like once it's set up and rigged, uh, you don't really need to touch it unless it's totally blocking something then you can make tweaks to your opacity. But I'm starting to ramble now. So go play with this. Um, again, my patrons, you have access to this animation preset. If you created this animation preset or you're using it, be aware that the current iteration of this, you're probably gonna have to jump in and just make sure that your zoom level is connected to the correct map comp. This is specific to my world map comp because it's called world map comp you'll need to change the name here to match your map comp name you can use the property pick whip to do that as well as always if you enjoyed this tutorial be sure to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you want to master geo layers check out my geo layers 3 master class um, and if you think this code can be written better write it up leave that in the comment section because that'd be cool see you next time